we're joined by Mr. Rick Schwartz, the Domain King, the real Domain King. Um, <laughs> and um, he's invited us over to his beautiful home here in Boca Raton, Florida. And we're going to talk about domains. Um, so we want to get started with your background. Like, tell us what you were doing before domains and how did you become a domain? I became a domainer uh, probably by accident. Um, uh, when I started, very few of the companies or businesses were online. It was 1995, maybe five or ten percent at most. And um, I had these uh, party line phone numbers that were vanity numbers, like 1-800-MAKEOUT, 1-800-SIR-LOVE. And uh, they would call that number and uh, I'd make about 25 cents a minute when people would talk. And uh, so I came out with this little, I wanted to see what, what's this thing with the internet. So I bought a domain called lipservice.com and um, I put three vanity phone numbers that I had never advertised anywhere before. So they were virgin pure numbers. And I wanted to see if I could make a spark. And uh, the, it was $39.95 in those days to get uh, someone to host a site. And the domain was $100 back then and plugged it in, uh, listed the few phone numbers, and that first month I think it made like, it, it, it made at least thirty nine ninety five and a little bit more. So at least it's like, okay, there's something here. And from that, you know, I just started uh, uh, testing and figuring things out, getting thrown off one ISP, going to another ISP. Um, and, and then I really didn't do anything in, uh, for about another six months, and my brother, gave me two domain names for my businesses and uh, for my birthday that year. And, um, and then I started bothering him. He's like, I said, well, can you, uh, can you register this one for me? And since I had 1-800-MAKEOUT, I uh, registered like makeout.com. And I started getting the um, matching.com to my 800 numbers. And um, after about two weeks of that, my <laughs> brother didn't want to waste any more time. And he sent me the URL and he said, you do that. And that changed my life because th then I just didn't go to sleep. <laughs> then, then I got hooked and um, I just started finding domain names. And little by little, I uh, started um, finding domains with type in traffic, with natural type in traffic where people, for whatever reason, just like they call my 1-800 vanity numbers, they type in makeout.com. Instead of 1-800-MAKEOUT, they would type in makeout.com. And, uh, and, and really the big moment was I get an email from a guy one night, probably right around May of 95, it could have even been May of 96, and he says, Rick, there's this domain dropping, you may want to try to get it. It'll be three in the morning. If you're up at three in the morning, try to register this. Now there were no drop places in those days. And I got up at three in the morning, and sure enough, I was able to get it. $4.8 billion company had they had the dot com, okay? So that's the other side of that coin, because they lost traffic. So why do I know they lost traffic? Well, I've been doing this for 26 years, and I have the um, counterparts of a dot com and a dot co, and I know about confusion. And you don't have to take my word for it. The only one that has really, and it, you know, we know it goes back five years, but, the only one that has truly done a true test on a .co was O.com, Overstock. Overstock. They had O.co. They did a Super Bowl commercial five years ago. The CEO wrote articles that they lost 61% of their traffic to the .com because they, people thought it was a .com. And it may be less than that now, okay? But it's a number. And that's the point. It's a number. 5%, 10%, I can tell you that seasoned veterans like myself know it's a minimum of 15% on any of them. 15% minimum, 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 minimum. And then you can go up to probably 50 or more depending on what's going on with a specific name. So now, let's do a little bit of math. Okay, let's do some math, because I'm not that smart. Just a math guy, a numbers guy. 2.8 billion? What if he loses 2% of his traffic? How much did that cost him? Well, that's a number. No, no, no. That's a, a number and a conversation that has to be had. And that's why I don't applaud the CEO. And that's why CEOs like that and have that mindset are not very bright. 
and they're not looking to the future, and it's just a gig for them for a few years until they get their next gig, okay? There's a difference between a CEO and a founder of a company, okay? A CEO is a salary, and a founder works his ass off because he got there from zilch. So do the math. Let's just say it's 5%. You got a calculator? Give me 5% of 2.8 billion. Really, pull out your iPhone and give me 5% of... It's about 140 million. Okay, 140 million. Jesus Christ, man! The, the guy's an idiot. Okay, at 5%. And it's more than that. It's more than 5%. But if it was 1% or 2%, it pays for the domain name. It's, it's an idiotic move. It was stupid. And no CEO that runs a company and doesn't have, has his dot-com counterpart or is trying to get it, they're lost. What about the case of Clubhouse? They have, I don't believe they have Clubhouse.com. I think they have joint Clubhouse. They, they better as hell get it. That's all I can tell you. They better as hell get it. They better as hell get it. If they don't, they're not being smart. They're just not being smart. If you have a valuation and you have money coming in, Look, the smartest move that I've seen since I've been online was Steve Case when uh, AOL bought Time Warner, right? AOL, a bag of smoke. AOL was a bag of smoke, but they had this great valuation. And he took and he levered that, leveraged that valuation to buy one of the biggest companies on earth, right? That was cool. That was the great, it was like the mouse swallowing an elephant, right? The smallest mouse swallowing the biggest elephant. And... For the life of me, I don't understand why, why other companies haven't learned the lesson. If you have these insane valuations, use them. Use them. And they are insane valuations. Some of these valuations are like way off the chart. So if you, if you have a valuation way off the chart, use that leverage to have something that's solid and foundational. That, anyway. I mean, great points. So, but, but, the, there, there's a trend of unicorns using these TLDs, especially with the Dota IOs like Thrashio, um, you know. But again, they're, they're, they're using a CC TLD, not a GTLD. Okay, just remember that. There, no one's, we're, who's using the, the GTLD that's like them? There, there is no breakout. IO and CO have broken out. But once they, once they get to cruising altitude, let's say, they're getting their dot com. It happens almost every week now. I've been writing about it for about two or three years, and I'm just saying that this trend will only increase and increase the, the more success they have, the more they need and want that dot com. They're, why would they want to stunt their growth? You know, dot com, we can agree, is still the universal domain name, right? So that's like every main street in the world versus certain main streets in certain worlds. Let's talk about the domain industry. Um, when you came to our clubhouse room, um, we talked about liquidity being a, an issue, right? You have some amazing assets that only a handful of corporations or even individuals can even think about purchasing, right? Property.com, $36 million. Right. Um, do you think that technology, in terms of... A lot of boats go by on Saturday. Let me just, like I-95 here, pal. So do you think that... Eventually, we're going to have platforms that allow for a group of people to crowdfund the purchase of a domain as speculators or maybe co-develop it? Well, there's a lot of um, chatter about that right now. I expect um, it could and will happen. And that, that's where we get to Bitcoin and blockchain and all that. And look, I, I like Bitcoin. Oh, see, I think I put it in here. Okay. It's not real, it's just like a fake Bitcoin, but it represents a Bitcoin. Okay, so what can I do with a Bitcoin? Okay, that's it, right? It's a Bitcoin, it's wonderful. It's worth 50 grand right now, I have a few of them, not, it's great, wonderful. We've all made money with it, it's terrific. Okay, let's see, can't, well, you know, can't build a house with it. I mean, what can you do with it? It's one dimensional, it's wonderful, and it, it gives a lot of independence, but it's one dimensional. When I compare that with an $8, dot com domain name or an 800 or an 8000 or a 50000 dollar a 50000 dollar domain name that's a pretty good domain name probably at 50 grand right you're getting something decent the whole thing is i can't build my dream on the bitcoin i can use, i can save the bitcoin i can invest in the bitcoin but i can't build anything on it with my domain name i can build a dream 
and then I could buy lots of Bitcoin. And there is a, a synergy between the two. So, uh, you know, we're talking about high valuations. So let's say you bought Bitcoin cheap, right? And, we, and some of us, bought, I, I think my first one was about $280 or something. So, you know, at some point you say, geez, maybe you take some of that, those winnings and you try to find another. It's like, you know, again, you go into a gaming hall, right? You're at one slot machine, one poker table, one, you know what? If you, if you uh, made a whole bunch of money, a few million dollars on one table, you know, probably that table's going to go cold at some... You, maybe it's time to look for another table. And that's where I believe the opportunity is for the people that have Bitcoin to get involved and get real assets because the, um, the domain name is more foundational than the Bitcoin, okay? It's, I think, Rosa, it's the bedrock, I think some people say, I'm right? A, I'm a crypto investor. I completely agree with you. I feel like... I could wake up tomorrow and Bitcoin could lose 10 grand in value, but with a domain name, I control the narrative. You control it and... Right. Yeah, so there are so many other options, yeah. I, you know, I'm all in. I actually deliberately sold one Bitcoin to invest in domains. There you go. And I think that it's clearly given me a, a great ROI. Even though I haven't made any kind of significant sale, but hanging out and just, you know, with the people who've been doing this for a while and getting myself educated, I think I've been able to build a, a great portfolio. I mean, GoDaddy values it at less than a million dollars, short of a million. Okay. And their valuation is obviously jacked up. So you want to talk about the, the valuation. How do you value a portfolio? Well, I never do valuations, number one. For Even for myself, I don't do valuations, really, because I'm, you know, on property.com, maybe I do, and things like that. But on most of them, I'm not going to do a valuation until I get an inquiry, because... Things are very f fast moving. For an example, I bought, uh, when, you, when the term smart glasses first came to market, the, I mean the first article that they ever did on smart glasses. So I'm there, and boom, I'm on the smart glasses. I'm trying to get the dot com. Well, it's sitting, I think, at GoDaddy or one of the platforms, $3,500, buy it now. Bingo! <laughs> Got the gun out, bought that sucker. $3,500, okay? worth a lot more now, right? So it's a whole sector, right? So that's why you can't have a buy, you know, you can't have a price on a domain name of something that's changing that quickly. And if I'm holding a lot of Bitcoin, there'd be only two things I'd be investing in. I'd either be buying domain names or real estate. One of the two or both, real estate and, and domain names. So let's talk about domains versus real estate, right? Let's. Digital versus physical love it. real estate. I love them both. Um, of course. I mean, you, you obviously diverse. Right? You diversify your assets. But if someone had a million dollars, can you explain why they should consider domains versus physical real estate in terms of ROI? Well, we all need a place to live, so that comes first. But assuming you have a place to live and you're, it's just your extra million dollars that you're going to invest, um, real estate is safe and it's nice, but it's expensive to carry. The, uh, you have like 2% property tax, so a million dollar uh, piece of real estate has a minimum of $20,000 a year in taxes. And then you have maintenance and that could be, uh, you know, a few hundred dollars a month and you have uh, electric and sewage. So, you know, by the time you're done, <coughs> it's gonna, <coughs> excuse me, probably cost you uh, 30 or 40 grand a year to carry. And even if you, uh, and that's without a mortgage. That's without a mortgage. That's free and clear. So even if you uh, lease it out, you may make a few dollars, but you're not going to get wealthy from it. The thing with a domain name, assuming you pick the right domain name and assuming you have a good idea and a big idea, it could buy you a lot of million dollar houses. And that's the difference. One, you uh, can really control your destiny and build your dream on. And that's what a domain name is to me. A good domain name is one that you can build your dream on. If you can't build your dream on it, get rid of it. So do you ever drop any domains? Very few. I mean, uh, very few. Uh, when I bought them, I figured I'd die with most of them. The, the ones that I would drop are the, like the perishable ones. So if I had 2016election.com, I would probably drop that because, okay, it's over. There's not enough history that people are going to go flock to it. and. Um, I would, so the, I, I consider those perishable domain names, and I do have perishable domain names. Uh, sometimes I go after the presidential candidates uh, or something like that, or you know anything like that that has an expiration date. Right. 
Well, you, you mentioned that you follow the trends, right? And I think one of the trends that we can all agree is currently occurring is everything's going into live stream mode, right? Clubhouse is a live platform. Um, you can go live on every social media platform. Um, and if the best practice is to take your content into your own domain, do you see a justification for someone having maybe a first name, Rick Dolage? Is that a good name? Uh, yeah, you know, if... if uh, Cause they can't find a Rick.com. Right, yeah, listen. Anything can be a great domain name as long as you cover your bases and you minimize confusion. So I'll give you an example. There used to be a place called 1-800-MATTRESS, and he advertised for decades on radio and TV, and, and the thing with 1-800-MATTRESS, it had an extra S. It had more digits than 1-800, you know, we have 10 digits. This had 11 digits. Well, that could be confusing to certain people, right? He would always say in every ad that he did for the whole 20 years, and leave off the last S for savings, okay? So he got over the hurdle of that objection. He didn't deny it or close his eyes to that leak that he would have. He got over the hurdle, and that's where the GTLD guys got to, they have to focus on that. They can't deny it, they have to, so if I have Rick.Live, I have to go out of my way to let them know this isn't Rick.com, this is Rick.Live, whatever, whatever you have to do to make that happen. I got Rick.TV, okay? And at some point, I'll do a YouTube channel, or maybe not YouTube, maybe something else, but I'll put my content on Rick.TV, because I can't got, get the Rick.com, because I think it's Rick D's famous guy, right? You know Rick D's, He's, yeah, yeah. he ain't giving it up, right? I got dick.com, that was as close, and people, more people th think I'm a dick anyhow, so that works out perfect. <laughs> but but, but, but when, if I use rick.tv, I will make sure that I will advertise it in such a way that brings attention to that .tv so people know they're not going to lose it, and they're not going to go to the wrong place. So if maybe I can minimize my leakage from maybe it would be 30%, Maybe I can minimize it down to 5% or less, where it's manageable. There's certainly going to be some leakage. There's, so, there's certainly going to be some leakage. That's the whole point. Whatever it is, whatever that number is, my job is to minimize it and cap it and, you know, b never ignore it and always be aware of it. And little by little, that leak will just keep getting smaller and smaller instead of bigger and bigger. So I have a question for you. Tatsu.com sold for seven fifty thousand, right? And you asked him thirty six million for property.com. Well, Frank Schillen is coming out with an auction, and he's selling dot tattoo and dot property, right? Um, would you rather own property.com or the entire extension? I'd rather own property.com. I'm right. I'm worldwide number one, I'm worldwide number one with no competition. And I can have every subdomain that can be on dot property. You know, yeah, like the uh, guy with is right? You got to remember, we, we've only gone sideways in building and developing. You know, they didn't build uh, skyscrapers in Manhattan in the 1600s. Okay, there was no need to, but eventually they ran out of room, and then they started to build vertical. They went from horizontal, and then they went to vertical. Well. Maybe that's what will happen and should happen with domains and you, you build vertical. Why would Apple want to promote 50 brands when they can just have, you know, maybe computers.apple.com or whatever, you know, every single one. Right. So you think, you think it's, a better nap, it's a better approach to have subdomains and own an entire extension as a business proposition? Well, obviously, look where Frank's at with dot property. It isn't going where it should have gone. I, I, listen, I was, I was happy and excited when it came out. How many registrations does dot property have? I'm not sure. Not many. Maybe 10,000 or 20,000? Have you ever seen a commercial for a dot property? No, you haven't. Have you ever seen a brochure for it? No, you haven't. A billboard? No, you haven't. It's invisible. Uh, listen, you can have this house tonight if you find one of your guys Hit, let him have dot property. Let him come out with dot property out of their mouth, okay? You want, you know, it's a pretty good bet, right? But it, it could also represent opportunity. I mean, it, it, it could, but it hasn't. Frank's a successful guy. If anyone was going to find success with something like dot property, he would have found it. He didn't find it. The people aren't adapting from, from, to it. In, in fairness to them, they're spread a bit too thin, and it wasn't, you know, this guy purchased 
20 something. But even Dot Club, Club, look, the guys from Dot Club have done more promotion for GTLDs in general and Dot Club and specific than probably everyone else combined. Fair enough? I mean, they were, these guys are unbelievable. They travel the world. Uh, their energy level is off the hook, but won't let them get away with what they said. So, Schwartz versus Schilling, October 2013, heavyweight match, part one, part two. We're on stage. They had four. It was only me and Lonnie Bork, who's deceased on my, because no one else in the industry would argue with me on my side. So, just the two of us against the four of them. Seven million registrations was the number that they said on that panel. So now it's seven years later and they are struggling to keep that one million number. They are struggling. They are doing everything every day to keep that number from going below a million. I mean, they are just like here over a million. And they've been sitting that way for a while now. It's a tough, tough thing. Here's two guys that love what they do. They believe in it. They've been hammering it for seven years tirelessly. Okay. But do you think that it presents opportunity for people that have the resources to market these extensions so that, for example, a dog property could be used to um, give a web address to every property in the world? You know, you could have your title story. Well, look what happened to Dot Realtor. They wanted every realtor to have Dot Realtor, and they basically rejected it. They went from 88,000 registrations, I think, down to 38,000 or something like that. It didn't work. They tried it. It just didn't work. You know, I had .moby, right? Everyone kids me and gives me shit because I bought flowers.moby for 200 grand. I learned the lesson. I'm the one that took the arrow for everybody. And that's when .moby had no other extensions going against it. And mob mobile was the big thing. And that was going to be, you know, they even some things had .moby on the telephone, a special. It went nowhere. It went nowhere. It's gone nowhere. It's never going to go anywhere. We're going to wrap up with some parting words. What do you think the future of the domain industry will look like? Well, you know, uh, you asked me if I sell, if I ever drop my domains. My domains are going to outlive my lifetime. And uh, the, the greatest wealth from the domains and what I own will become, will happen after I'm off this planet. And so I have a foundation. And I've directed this foundation how to operate and when to sell and when not to sell. And I want to do great things with the money that that foundation earns because it's going to earn a lot of damn money. That's how much money it's going to be worth. You still have a minimum price for your domains? Like there's no, you want that you won't go below for each domain? I think you said something about I would never sell a domain for less than 50 grand. Is that what you want? Well, it started at $15,000 back in like 1996. And then it went to 50. And by 1999, it went to 100. And when I went to 100, I sold my first domain name, and that was eScore.com, to um, uh, uh, Kaplan Educational in New York City, which was a big outfit at the time, and they spent 100 grand for eScore.com. And after that, I'm, I don't know if I ever sold another domain for less than 100 grand, maybe one or two. Um, and then flowers.com for the uh, flowers.mobi, see? Flowers, that's, that's what happens, see? So flowers.mobi for the tax deduction, I think I sold it for $6,500. So, I've, you know, the tax deduction was tens of thousands of dollars. So, and, uh, you know. Yeah, so, so you, 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 you've been very graceful with this interview. I want to thank you so much. We've learned so much. Um, and I'm sure everyone out there has been able to put a face to the name, especially newer domainers. How can people get a hold of you? Um, I'm the easiest guy in the whole world to, to find. Um, I can't give you my uh, 800 number on the air, but it's uh, one you can never forget. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but I'm at DomainKing.com or uh, I'm at domain, DomainKing.com or uh, they can email me at uh, DomainKing at gmail.com and I take shit. Well, why don't you have your email at your, one of your dot coms? And I always tell the people, every time I send this email to their .com, it always bounces. Right, right. <laughs> I, I get 100% of the email. Maybe they look at it, but I get them all. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Rick. This thank you. Awesome. Thanks for coming.